Now, when continuing on the Yetzer Ha-Ra'a and the Yetzer Ha-Tov from the last portion, as we mentioned, and we'll go over this again, and we're referring to one of the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia site, as a basic flyover, a basic overview, a basic acquaintance, getting familiar with um, some of these Judaic and Hebraic terms and, and, and concepts. Here it says, in Judaism, the Yetzer Ha-Ra'a is... Um, the inclination for the the evil inclination, the evil inclination, because ha ra a, but we also have the yet a ra a, the yet a ra a, uh, and and a distinction between a ra a ra and a ray, a ray, a ray mean to see. You understand? A ray mean to see, and a ra a means evil. And this is in the Shemitic, the Kamo Shemitic, the Afro Shemitic languages like Hebrew, even ancient Egyptian and Ethiopic have these nuances and these very important um um distinctions between similar sounding words, but the difference is in the sound of it, word, sound and power. So between the Yetzer Ha Ra'a means the evil inclination, and the Yetzer Ra'a means an evil inclination, it refers to the inclination to do evil, we know as kuful, to do evil, by violating the will of Hashem, Baruch Hu, the Ha Elohim, the true God, the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, Getach, and Jesus Christos, otherwise known as Jesus Christ, in spirit and in truth. The term now, the Yetzer Ha Ra'a and the Yetzer Ra, the term is drawn or derived or found in the phrase Yetzer Lev Ha Adam Ra. Yetzer Lev or Lib, Yetzer Lev Ha Adam Ra'a, which occurs twice. This occurs twice in the Hebrew. Bible in Genesis 6 and 5 and Genesis 8 and 21. Now the translation is the imagination of the heart of man evil. The is is put in there to add with the flow, but there's, there's actually no is in it. So the context is that the imagination of the heart of man evil. But the is, if you look in your Bibles, you'll see some italicized, this is in King James Bible, the italicized words that are between other words are usually not there. They are put there to give it in the English more of a sense and the flow so an English speaker would understand if it said the imagination of the heart of man evil. For whatever reason, some English speaking folks would not have gotten it. So the King James translators add that is. And in other renditions of it, it's put in brackets, the is. But the main thing is that this particular phrase is very, very, very important. This particular phrase that we find two times in the Hebrew Bible and two times in Berasit, you understand, know in Berasit, in the book of Genesis. One is in Genesis uh, 6 and 5, Bamarinya. It says, So here it says, Bamarinya in the Met of Kedus of His Majesty, His Majesty's Bible, it says, Yelibu of His Heart, Asa, the thought of His Heart, Minyotim and the the lust the the you know what one lust lust is not necessarily bad lust desire to say desire you understand because it qualifies it by saying the thought of his heart and the minyot and the desire which is translated I guess in 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 other Bibles as imagination on a certain level hulgize always Fetmo completely kufu in the hone, kufu in the hone, as it is evil, as it is unkind, aye, that he saw, that he arrayed, you understand, the ara'a. He had a array of the ara'a. And this is found actually in the Hebrew when we 
I think we put up our Hebrew um, um, Torah in the next part of the bait. So we'll bring that forward when you see there's both a uh, ra, you understand, which means evil, and there is the re or a roi, which is similar. People confuse it like when they say the sun god of Egypt, ra. That's a Jewish pun. When you say when they say ra, ra is saying evil. Really, more correctly, it should be pronounced array because array basically means to see. The sun was thought to be the eye of God, and when the sunlight came up, people were able to array. They were able to see, as well as um 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 array or 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 rai, which which was to shepherd. In other words, the word in the Ethiopic also refers to um, shepherding, like what says, the Lord is my shepherd. That word also is connected with the root of array or roi, el roi. You find that in the Bible. In fact, uh, Hagar, Hagar, when she um, um, ran away from her mistress, when she didn't want to behave, she ran out and she was praying to God, or she was she was running away from her mistress, and the angel said, "What you doing?" Some say it was Gabriel. And she said, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she said, and the angel said, go back, you know, go back. And she said, wow, I've actually spoken with the angel of the Lord. And she called the well, uh, ber, the, the ber lehai roi. So a roi that you find in that part of Genesis, we haven't touched on it just yet, is the very same root of this word. So it's learning the language and the languages, but also in the context. And this is how you can really um, um grasp it better when it's put into context, not a bunch of words and concepts that don't have any relationship with anything that, that, is, that is real. But we're learning this in context with actual events, both then and also a, a, a reflective or prophetic of this particular time that we're in now. So this phrase occurs in, they say, 6 and 5 and 8 and and 8 and 21. So let's go to um, 8 and 21 for a moment, Bamarinya, and let's see what it reads in 8 and 21. It says, that Giziavi Harim, Melkamuna Meaza, Shetete, Egziavi Harim, Belubu Ale, Midarina Dagmenya, Selesoa Ala Regmen, Yeso. Lib Asa Ka Tanashinetu Jamro Kufu Nawina. Interesting he's saying that that man from from him being small, starting from being from man starting from him being small, from even being a child, has that inclination to evil, has that inclination to evil. The the, the proverbs tell us you can tell what kind of child it is by what the child does. Degmon kazik edmo in da de regohut hiyawanin hulu in the genna alametam. Alametam. Now, the King James uh, translation of this, 8 and 21, we have to study and show ourselves approved and have to rightly divide the word of truth in 8 and 21. It says, and the Lord smelt a sweet savor. He smelt a sweet smell, a sweet savor. And the Lord, Yahweh, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, Baruchu, he said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more. Every living, everything living, as I have done, as I have done. Now it says, and while the earth remain, at verse 22, seed time and harvest, cold and and heat, uh, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease as long as the earth remaineth. Now on the yetzer ha ra'a. It's important for us to understand that the Yetzer Ra'a is not a demonic force. I think this is probably one of the most important things to really understand. Yes, the verse in the Hebrew, Yetzer Lev Ha Adam Ra'a, the imagination of the heart of man, evil or is evil. But the Yetzer 
Ha-ra'ah is not a demonic force. The inclination to evil is not a demonic force. Some people say, how you say that? It's what it is. It's man's misuse. It's man's misuse of the things the physical body needs to survive. It's man's misuse or, or poor stewardship, for example, of the earth, allowing pollution, allowing the bloodshed, allowing all kinds of evil. You understand? Like, for example, look at sex for a moment. Sexual intercourse. When it is proper, it's a very beautiful thing. It's very necessary thing, so forth and so on. But now, when it is now being misused, you see what I'm saying? Misused. Now, it can be misused for a lot of reasons, which are not necessarily demonic. You understand? But it allows, through continual, through continual misuse, and when the Almighty sends a censure against it, it's just like during the time of Noah, they were told, hey, the things you're doing evil by the, pro the, the, the teacher of righteousness, Noah, and they didn't want to listen. You know, when they stop the ears, you know, and they'd be like a, a serpent that refuses to be charmed, even though the charmer is charming ever so charmingly. You, you know, now that's now what's, what, what now tends now to the, 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 the fact that people don't want to recognize the evil or try to make the evil sound good or try to make the need, the necessity, or the imbalance. You see, the imbalance. Thus, the need for food becomes gluttony in the sense that there's a need for food, but when the need for food is out of whack, out of balance, it becomes gluttony. And this is due to the yetzer ha-ra'a. The need for pro pro procreation, it becomes sexual abuse. So there's a need for procreation. There may be a need for intimacy. You understand? But then when it goes beyond the, the God-given or God-given bounds of what is natural and what is right, this is where, you understand, this is where the demonic now has, has, has an opportunity. For example, look at the story of Cain and Cain with Abel. In the story of Cain and Abel, Cain felt bad about, like, the, you know, he felt bad about the sacrifice, sacrifice not being accepted by Yah, you know. Um, and what did, what did the Almighty do? Try to speak to him. Try to speak to him, right? They didn't need to speak to him. And, and in fact, let's not just talk off, as I said, the top of our uh, Ras, but let's go to the Word, because the Word truly is the Ras. That's why they call it Berasit, or Bereshit. You understand? Know because that, that is the beginning. It's in the head. The word right here. The word of truth says this right here. Do you remember the, the scene? I think it was in Genesis 4, right? In Genesis 4. Now, Cain is exhorted, right? Uh, or it says, okay, and Adam knew, his, knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. And Kai, K mean red, and Oin mean eye. So he was red eye, K Oin, Kayin, red eye, envious and jealous, and said, I have gotten a man from Egeziabihir Lotus of Hot, from Yod He Wow He. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But she said nothing. So she said, I've, been, I've gotten a man from Jehovah. So she said that Jehovah, so her Jehovah was not. Moses Jehovah. It's important for us to understand that, seeing who she was. And, what, and this is speaking about the old motherhood. And we're seeing a resemblance of this motherhood, this, this degeneracy of the motherhood, even going on in the present time, not among all women, but among the great majority. The same way with father and fatherhood, if one would want to make a, a parody of it there, because remember, Cain, not Cain and Abel, but Adam and Eve, they both, they both were in the wrong. Even though there was an order of precedence of wrong, Adam was first wrong, you understand, and Eve was, Eve was, Adam was womanly disobedient, and Eve was deceived. So actually, it's a, I'm not saying it's better for Eve, but she was deceived. Somebody played a trick on her. Adam knew better, and he did it anyway. Black man, are you overstanding something right here? You know, so we have a God problem. You know, we need to work that out in Yeshua. So if she bear his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass 
that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to yod heh wow -Hey, or Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect to Abel and to his offering, but to Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. No, he didn't regard it. He didn't pay no attention to it, as to say, Yahweh. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Because, you know, Cain, let me put it another way for you, brothers and sisters. Cain was big boy. He was like that. He was mama's boy. Cain represents the mama's boy. You understand? He was a mama's boy. He, he now was wroth. His countenance fell. Oh, big boy. Big boy was upset, right? But it's like big boy probably didn't have no man training to say. Because remember, Adam is, it was already partially broken, but Adam is not in this relation. We're just hearing the, the mother had this child said that he was blessed. The other child, she didn't even say nothing about him. She focused on her, her first little boy. You understand? The other one didn't get any word that a positive mention here. Adam does, but the mother did not, right? Now, here is that Cain is exalted even yet to bring a sin offering. And Yahweh said to Cain, why art thou wroth? Why are you angry? You understand? And why is thy countenance fallen? In other words, why is your, why is your, like your, 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 your chakras, your, the, your, the light energy, the light intensity in you turn so sullen, turn to these deeper, darker colors, red eye. You understand? Because the red is the first, the lower, but red at its lowest level is black. You understand? The, we're speaking now of the spectral of the light, of the chakra, of the seven seals. You understand? So, so his countenance was fallen. You understand? His, 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 um, his soul, if one could see, as Yahweh saw, saw his, his chakra light. You understand? And knew that it was fallen. It was not at that, at that um, what they call it, that, that, that wine color or that lavender, that higher, brighter color, but it had descended down into the red and into the black. And that has nothing to do with all this little racism craziness. That confuses a lot of folks when they look at this. That's why that has to be, that, that evil spirit has to be cast out, that racism stuff. You understand, white supremacy. Verse 7, it says, if thou doest well, if you do well, that which is told, if you, if you have inclination, a yet uh, tov, instead of this yet uh, a, a ra a that you have, shall thou not be accepted? Won't you be accepted? Won't your gift be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin, chatiyat, she, in the Ethiopic, she, lieth at the door. And to thee shall be, you understand, his, it says, desire, and thou shall rule Thou shall rule him. Something very interesting is done right here in the King James. And here, because we went over this part, we're going to go to the King of Kings. Um, King of Kings. The true authority for this word right here. And let's go to Genesis, uh, uh, what was that, 4 and 7. And let's get a reading of it right here. 4 and 7. Uh, start from 6, it says, alo. Lemena tenada de Lemenesa fite tecore Melcom betada rega fite yemi berai de lemon Melcom batada rega gin a hat iata bedeja tade balech tade balech. And when sin is loitering at your door, is lurking outside your door, fecado am wood anteno. Ante Erswan Now, here's something very interesting, and this you have to make a note of, brothers and sisters. In the King of Kings, unlike the King James has sin as he, but in the King of Kings, in the Ethiopic, sin is as she. And we're going to do our study to compare this with the Masoretic and see what the Masoretic says. But it's very important to understand this relation because when we look at the tree, the Garden of Eden and the tree, there's some gender bending going on. In other words, once the serpent appealed to femininity at the tree, 
won over Eve. Once it appealed to a woman's thing. And notice, sisters, how easy it is for the for the evildoers to appeal to a woman's thing, make it a woman's thing, and automatically you're caught up in it, but you're not even weighing whether it is right or wrong. You just figure it's a woman's thing, then then go woman, go woman. This is a part of Satan's divide and conquer. You understand his divide? He knows that the male and the female are a unit. If he can break that, you understand, then he can further continue to, to break, you understand, to, to divide and, and therefore to rule. Now, it's interesting because it says right here, Bamarinya, it says, Fekada Wam, you understand, and her desire, what unto know is towards you, her desire, her will, unto again, but you, but you, but Arswa, Neges Shabbat, or Neges Sabbat. But you be king upon her. You be king over her, not queen. Don't you be a queen, Cain. But Cain, instead of being a king, Cain became a queen. Not in the outer aspect, if you will understand the metaphysics of this, because it says that you are to the Araswa, over Araswa, over her, over this desire. You understand? Over this energy. There's a certain energy. Speaking about this male and female energy, and we don't have time to break this down right now, but there's this positive energy, which is usually considered to be male energy. You understand? Negative energy, which is feminine energy. It goes back to the whole um, 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 magnetic electric, the magnetic electric. If you break that down, one has a positive, one has a negative, and this is the male and female in our energetic universe. And this is what was being spoken to to Kayin here by Ekezi Abihar Lotu Subhat, our Godfather and the King of Kings, was saying that she is lurking. This this evil inclination is like a prowler, is like a burglar, is like a loiterer, is loitering right outside your door. What door is it talking about? The door of your heart, the door of your consciousness, Kayin, red eye and envious and jealous. It says that her desire is, is to you, is, is towards you. In other words, you can use this but not be used by it. But you must be king. You must be sovereign. You must rule over this negative desire. Well, according to, according to the story, we see that the next part is the first murder. And then there's the history of Kayin. And we know the story that basically... He, he he didn't he didn't listen to that. So this is what we mean that that he already had an evil inclination because he became so sullen. He became so raw. He became jealous and envious. You understand? Um, and then the Almighty comes to him and says, Listen, here's how you can get out of it if you do the right thing. You understand? If you do the will, then don't worry about that. Your brother got it because your brother is doing the right thing. So be like your brother and do the right thing. Basically is what's being said. But none of that, basically, it's like when somebody, you know, when you're talking to somebody, trying to talk them out of something, and they won't hear you. It's like you're, like, making all kind of stuff, you know, all kind of, like, sense and trying to use comparisons and everything. And, and they still are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they go back to it, and you'd be like, man, that just wastes my time. In a sense, you did, but not for judgment's sake. For, for judgment, you did well if you presented the truth, regardless if they did not choose it. You know what I'm saying? Because they're free to choose. Like, you were free not to even say anything. Those people say, I ain't going to say anything because it ain't going to make no difference. You're a fool. Period. You know what I'm saying? You're a fool because the Almighty has put that upon your heart and you don't say anything. You're looking at the person to be the judge. You're not looking at the Almighty, the truth, the true God to be the judge. So you're fallen. You're already a low, a low level fallen. In fact, you are bowing to the inclination to evil by not speaking the truth when there is a righteous opportunity to do so. So now, the, um, the idea that humans were born with a yet a, a ra'a, physical needs, physical needs, this is the whole idea about the inclination to so-called evil, is that there are physical needs that can become kufu, that can become evil, but that humans don't acquire the real yet a Tov, or the yet Toba, you understand? A good inclination until the age of maturity. 
to the age of maturity, which is said according to Judaism and, and the Hebraic way, 12 years of age for girls and 13 years for boys. It's a wide 12 for girls because everyone knows that girls mature faster than boys. Is that sexist, sisters? No, that's reality. So let's get off that everything that if it says man, male, this, that, the second, let's try to understand these things scientifically and try to really do our research. And many things in the Bible has been looked up, like the 40 days for male child, 80 days for female child, and a lot of these things are just a part of health and, and, and holistic. They've been found now with science, really looking at some of these things that found that the, how could they have known that it takes more out of a woman to have a girl child than to have a boy child. So where it says that, that 40 days for a male child, one is, quote, ritually unclean and, and uses time to heal, and 80 days for a girl child, I mean, who would have known? You know, because people today pride themselves that we are so much more advanced than people in ancient times. Um, we should really know better more so than people in ancient times. But be that as it may, it's important to understand this difference between these inclinations. And we all have these particular inclinations. In other words, the imagination of one's heart, the thoughts of one's heart, and having desire or minyot is not necessarily wrong. But it is wrong if these things go beyond in order to fit out of balance, if they're out of ma'at, if they're out of equilibrium, if they're out of what is just and right. And unfortunately, I think we have a whole generation of folks who never understood what just and right is. They've been told that what is just and right is whatever you want. Do what thou wilt. You understand the so-called law of um, 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 Crowley, you understand, some, some witchcraft, wicked, and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? We, un we understand, we overstand that. You know, was, but a lot of you don't know that this is what's driving many of your decisions. You don't know that the way you think, the way you've been programmed to think, you know, was, is an enmity and opposition to the truth. And this is where one must become conscious and say, yes, I've been doing this and thinking this, but I never thought about it. Think about it. Now, the personification of evil, this is just another connective point, that although some forms of Judaism, both ancient and modern, do recognize the existence of supernatural evil, in particular the, the fallen angels, as in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Yetzer Hara is often presented as a personification of evil distinct from the so-called supernatural, to say spiritual, Ha Shaitan, Satan of traditional Christianity and Islam. Because Christianity and Islam have their own particular supernatural Satan. That when we get to the root, the Judaic, the, the, the root of the tree of life, we can basically understand how Christianity and Islam is like a tree and you get the central root, and that's Judaism. Salvation is of the line and tribe of Judah, of the Jews. And then you, you have the branches. You understand? And if you understand the tree, the tree has two different, two different sides of the tree. And this is a part of the war between uh, Christianity and, 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 and so-called Islam that the devil has, 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 has wrought between these two branches in opposition to the very root. And the very root of that tree is what we will call the, the Hebraic establishment or Judaism. For lack of for lack of a better descriptor, now the the tendency there's a tendency to demythologize or mythologicalize Satan. That's found in certain certain works, um, such as certain Jewish works, try to take it out of that realm of so-called mythology and really show an actual interaction between men and people, so that we can become more conscious of what we're doing more conscious of ourselves, more sentient and aware, you understand, in order to improve our interaction, our love of neighbor, you understand, our cooperation as as creatures of God, if not as children of God. So there's some rabbinical works that goes into that demythologizing of, of, of Satan, which are 
better than modern Eurocentric philosophy. The Jewish stuff is better than the modern Gentile philosophy, actually. I just put that word out there. And it's also found in some of the enlightened Christian writers, those who are called the enlightened Christian writers, um, such as even Isaac Newton. Many of them also were influenced by some of the, the Hebraic and the Jewish writings and some of the teachings. Now, there's much more to the, the, the Yetzer Ha-Ra'a and the Yetzer Ha-Tov, but we wanted to give a basic, a basic connection, seeing that in Genesis 6 and, and, and 5 and Genesis 8 and 21, it is speaking about this very same thing that, that Halloween and these kind of um, folly days, we call them folly days or holidays, um, symbolize, for example, is it an inclination to do evil or is it an inclination to do, to do good, Halloween? People will say it's good, but let, let, let's ask ourselves, October 31st, right? The, the holiday or folly day is called Halloween and is celebrated by young and old alike in honor and tribute to who? Who is this in honor and tribute to? Think about it. Is it an honor and tribute to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or the God of Israel or the true God? No. It's an honor and tribute to Satan, the devil. So it's definitely very clearly an inclination to evil. This is a folly day, so-called holiday, that Satan uses to control your fears. See, this, this so-called holiday known as Halloween is all about controlling your fears. People are so programmed that they do not think twice about placing um, wicked and evil symbols, such as so-called witches and bats, jack-o'-lantern, so-called black cats. And not that a black cat is evil, but the connotation. See, the connotation has been perverted. Like, don't let no black cat cross your path, otherwise you're going to have a bad day. What? Oh, my goodness. You believe that? You be naive that ghosts and goblins as decorations in their stores, in their schools, and even in their very homes. And, and they go around frightening each other because they think it's fun. It's fun, really. It's fun. A phobia, phobias are not fun. You understand? Phobias are not fun. Little children are, are gowned and dressed up in these horrible masks. A lot of them nowadays from horror movies and a lot of other very questionable, you know, masks and costumes. But these masks and costumes, you know what they invoke? They invoke the Ghanaian, the Aganin. They invoke what the Muslim and the Arabs call the jinn. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the evil, evil fallen angels and evil forces, evil temperaments, evil thoughts, evil states of mind that pretend themselves to be fear-seeming. This is how they get over it's just a fun thing for the children because, look, the children are smiling. A lot of people have smiled, you understand, before they have been murdered and killed. And, and you know, I mean, so just because somebody's smiling doesn't mean that they're going to have a happy day or a good day. Now, another thing about this particular day or holiday is really the day before, and that's the Eve. That's when, that's when the real... Um, evil magic, what they call, quote, black, so-called magic. But see, it's really black magic, not because of black people so much, even though that's another, another, con, another con notation given to it. It's really black because when you look at it from a chakra, spectral level, you understand? It's, it's, it's at the root, the ground chakra, the genital chakra, or the lower, the genital and the anus is on the same chakra. And that goes from the, from the black to the red. And that is going back to the, you could say, to the um, primal, the primal, in a sense, even the unregenerated activity, even the immature activities. You know, when they talk about people psychologically being um, anal retentive and all these kind of things, so forth and um, so on. But it's on October 30th. It's called, guess what they call October 30th? They call it, and they have no, you can look it up on the internet. Don't believe me. Just know the truth for yourself. They call this Devil's Night. It's known as Devil's Night, October 30th. That's the Eve. Remember, it's All Hallows Eve. 
and it's a night when fires are started throughout many cities for pleasure. Back in the days, more so than probably now, because it's been really cold. People are starting fires just to stay warm because of, you know, the the Shocktober, October surprise storm. But there's often been around this time a heavy loss of lives and damage to property and damage to land. Under Halloween, it is a holiday of evil, and it fits perfectly with what. Genesis six and five and six uh, six and five and eight and twenty one says is the yet hara or yet lev ha adam ara or the imagination of the heart of man is evil. Food for thought, something to think about.